Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and in a recent video you saw me take Herb Blair's patterns that he made on a 3D printer and I make lead flywheel castings out of them. And as uh, talked about earlier, there was quite a bit of fallout here because the patterns aren't all that smooth when they come out of a 3D printer. Now I've had a lot of good advice uh, about how to give these a acetone uh, bath or vapor bath to clean that up but it's a little too late for this so uh, I was wanting to machine these and make a video showing uh, machining these but there's just an awful lot of filing to do here and although the lead is soft enough and I have a thousand files I thought I'd approach this cleanup in a little different uh, way of course the periphery is going to be easy enough to do on a belt sander or in a vise with a with a flat file it's a little more difficult to get in here so I have decided to make a makeshift filing machine so let's take a look at what I've done so far and it's a work in progress and a, a bit of a fiasco or failure but I think it'll 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 work now don't make fun of this thing yet but this is a Milwaukee saber saw a jigsaw and uh, one thing I like about it, I only paid two bucks for it. I guess that's what I like about it. But the reason it was only two bucks is that the switch did not work. So this thing was dead in the water. I took the switch out and direct wired it. And uh, I can just plug it in. But then it runs full blast. So I got it hooked up to my Dremel uh, speed control over here. So I, if I want to, I can change the speed. Because, in fact, let me turn it on now before I talk about the blades. At certain speeds, you can see how it vibrates. And this is about eighth inch thick steel and you see how it flexes here. So I thought that would be plenty rigid but it isn't. It really needs to have a proper table, but it's not going to get one, at least for now. Also, I use round head screws right here, thinking that uh, they would not be in the way. But in fact, when I go to file like this, they, they interfere over here. So I'm going to make a new table off camera, and it will be made out of quarter inch hot roll, because that's what I got and uh, similarly made and, and still going to be clamped just on a 2x4 here for expediency. I went to Menards and I was looking at uh, files and, and cutting tools and so on and they sell these recipro tools with various attachments and there's one of their files and that was marked down to four bucks because this was on the rack where they want to get rid of things. I think it was a failure. But however it requires a uh, a little chuck that they were out of because those probably sold immediately and they're about ten dollars and I did find them on uh, eBay but uh, I don't think I'll buy one but essentially this turns your sawzall into a filing machine well I got a sawzall but you know that would be pretty awkward so I gave up on that already that was a I don't know what I was thinking of also a machine file needs to be drawn down so it would have to be held down here but the problem with jigsaws like this Milwaukee here is that they have a little chuck on them but the chuck will only accommodate these little shanks so what I've done is taken uh, and I do have hundreds and I, I do not exaggerate this is about half of what I got hundreds and hundreds of blades and, you know, some of those are pretty expensive if you have to buy them. And some of these are blades that are uh, carbide type blades, you know, like a, a Remington rod saw. So I considered using those, but I think the lead would clog it. But ultimately, I found two uh, Vermont American, this isn't it, blades, and they're much finer than this. And two of them would fit in the chuck, barely. So that gives it a little more width than a single blade so in effect I have a little bit of a file that is about that wide but both of them are the same and they're, they're metal cutting blades and we got a one inch stroke on there 
and also on the the jigsaw there is a follower bearing back here that uh, makes it a little more rigid. This Milwaukee saw is reasonably well constructed. So this is what I have now. And remember it's cutting on the down stroke. If it would cut on the upward stroke it's going to vibrate and lift the work. And I can change the speed on that. Now let me say when I was teaching I had a Keller die filer there and I never did like it. First of all it weighed a ton. Secondly uh, it was you know which made it hard to move around and I just didn't think it performed that well and I did have machine files in both the coarse and the fine and I did use it. It was not something that you could let the kids use much because they would break the files and those files are very expensive. Then later I owned a, a dual filing machine and I had it here right on, on this bench but there were problems with it. It was worn out I guess was the problem so I didn't like it and it's long gone. I don't even know what I did with it. And finally while I was teaching there was a Dual Fork 16 inch bandsaw and that had the band filing attachment. But when I arrived at the school in 1967 that all those bands were absolutely torn up and unusable. I did get one repaired well enough to use and uh, I played around with it a little bit and I let the kids use it and then you know it lasted 15 minutes and then that was the end of that. I gave up on band filing. But if a band filer is uh, kept in good condition with, uh, with sharp files I think that they are incredibly uh, useful machines but uh, because there is no uh, reciprocating action that is it's filing 100 percent of the time not half of the time. All right, that's enough on some of that old technology. And you can still buy a die filer, but I tell you what, it's going to cost you $1,000, I suppose. It's a half hour later, and here's what I came up with. The quarter inch thick, but the C-clamp is a bit in the way. That could be screwed down on there, but for the smaller workpiece, it doesn't really matter. And the uh, actual saw is almost touching the bench there, but I got clearance. Notice that there is plenty of flex sideways with this, but none pushing this way. The hub on this does not allow it to set flat, so I have to use a couple of, uh, I wonder how long these are, oh they're four inches. Lay like that, and then I can start filing in here. Remember the outside I'm going to do on the big belt sander. And to appease the safety Nazis, I will wear a respirator for this uh, toxic dust. But remember that I'm a septuagenarian and will be taking my dirt nap within five years, so I don't worry so terribly much about that. And of course, I know what some of you are going to say. He's not filing, he's sawing. But it seems to work reasonably well. There seem to have been some misalignment on the spokes as far as the pattern is concerned. Unless something slipped in my mold. But I'm going to go ahead and, and work on that. And uh, it would be nice to have a round one or a wider one or whatnot. But this is what I came up with. This one is going to take much more work. There's just an awful lot of lead there.
just a little more coming along. This is the spot that required the most work. And whether I'm cutting, filing, or sawing, whatever you want to call that, it's this is semi-successful. I still got that spoke yet. The narrow blade helps me to get in uh, to, to narrow spots like this and into the acute corners where you'd almost have to use a needle file. And another nice thing here is that these blades are not loading up, whereas a file constantly loads up and needs to be cleaned. The Delta bandsaw with a wood cutting blade is quite successful at cutting lead, but I'm noticing an occasional spark, and that is due to this foundry sand that is uh, still stuck to the casting, and I suppose I already ruined my blade, and I hope not. So that's about as soft. as cutting wood. The rest I'll sand, and it really doesn't matter anyway, because I'm going to put this on the lathe and turn that, I hope. And similarly, I am uh, sawing on the 8th smoker. You see the spark? That's how it looks on the periphery, both of them pretty much the same. Just like you would see a rough casting coming from the foundry, I think they call that snagging. And uh, one time, boom, 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 you know, it got caught like that, you know, what it'll do in a reciprocating saw. Now, one of the shortcomings of the filing machine is that when you hand file, you, you can contour, you can curve it one way or the other. And I'm not really able to do that with this makeshift thing, but it was semi-successful to this point, and now I've got this one to do, most of which I will do off-camera. At least with this uh, eight spoker, it lays flat. I sanded it so it's all on one plane, and I'm coming right along. You can see I've got two out of the four done, and I put an auxiliary light up here because, you know, when you're 73 years old, you can't get enough light. And whether I'm sawing or filing, it's working fairly well, semi-successful. I'm almost done here. I have one more spoke space left, and I've switched from the dual fine ones to a much more aggressive uh, coarse wood cutting blade, but it's really too coarse, and these are thick enough to where I cannot use two of them side by side, so I'm down to one, and I guess we can't even call this a filing machine. It's just a saber saw upside down, but it does work fairly well, leaves a relatively rough finish. so on. Now you really can't beat, or I can't beat, just using a big coarse file and remembering that this is lead and the softest of all metals, I think. Maybe gold, pure gold is pretty darn soft, but uh, using coarse 
rat tail file and changing the angle as I file. It allows me to get in all the corners and this is not to be uh, discarded. This is still a handy tool but I'm thinking you know I have not done aluminum or brass or anything like that with this method. Uh, a much harder metal and I don't know how effective it will be on that but uh, that concludes this rather crude lead casting uh, preparation for machining. I'll just finish up this one and then I'm going to step over uh, in the next video to the lathe and drill and ream this and machine it as well as the other one. And uh, that will conclude this video. So the jury is still out on this. You know, this is so flexible that, uh, and one of the biggest faults is the chuck in this Milwaukee uh, jigsaw just has such a narrow slot it will not accommodate a series of these but I ideally would like to have used three or four of these side by side to form a file and cause it to be a lot more rigid. Okay that concludes this video I hope this was a somewhat interest to you although I consider this a semi-failure. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.